You are listening to Mind Pump, the world's top-ranked, most downloaded fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. Worldwide. We're number one. All right, so in this episode, we answer fitness and health questions that are asked by our audience, uh, listeners just like you. But we open the episode with this introductory portion. So we talk about current events. We tell funny stories. We talk about our sponsors. Today's intro was 37 minutes long. After that, we get into the fitness questions. So let me give you a whole rundown of today's episode. We open up by talking about Adam's face. Oh, yeah. Looking mm. looking very nice and cherub-like youthful these days. Youthful and pretty. And more youthful. And that's because he's using Caldera. Caldera makes some of the best skin products you'll find anywhere. All natural products made with the finest sourced herbs around to bring down inflammation and increase plumpness of your skin to reduce things like wrinkles. This is why Adam looks so jovial and young these days. <laughs> <laughs> because he, he listen, loves those adjectives. Because you listen to my pup, you get 20% off all their products. Go check them out. Calderalab.com, C-A-L-D-E-R-A-L-A-B.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump for 20% off. Then I talk about doing deadlifts at the end of my back workout. Oh my God, it's crazy. No, for reals. Uh, normally you do deadlifts at the beginning, do them at the end. Uh, it's another way to work out, find out in that part of the episode why. Uh, then we talk about the late night feedings. Uh, last night, I got not that much sleep. My wife got even less because my baby son, Aurelius, is a party animal at night. Little shit. Oh, yeah. That's right. Then I talk about uh, how breast milk probably has drugs in it uh, because as soon as he drinks it, he's out like a light. Uh, Justin talks about how his dad said a bad word. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Such a naughty word. Then we talk about how real clear politics just took Pennsylvania away from Biden. That's right. You thought he won, but maybe he hasn't. Uh -oh. But wait, there's more. It, we haven't had a civil war yet. Let's keep going. Yeah, let's see let's what we keep can do. throwing gasoline on it. Then we talk about the sleep deprivation effects uh, on men versus women. Looks like women win on that one, everybody. Mm -hmm. Then we talk about why Organifi's green juice kicks the crap out of all the other green juices out there. If you like drinking green juice that tastes like grass, Ooh. go somewhere else. Yeah. But if you want to drink green juice that tastes good and it has 600 milligrams of ashwagandha in every serving, then you got to go with Organifi. Here's where you go get the discount. Go to Organifi.com, O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash mind pump, and then use the code mind pump and you get the massive mind pump discount. And then finally, I bring up a study on how people who have a positive outlook on life tend to have less memory loss later on. So that's kind of cool. Hey. Then we got into the questions. Here's the first one. First person wants to know, what's the difference between practicing a squat and performing a squat? Believe it or not, there is a difference. Mm -hmm. The next question, this person wants to know how you would start working out if you're old and fragile. Their 65-year-old dad wants to start working out. How should they start strength training? CrossFit. Then, next question, this person says, where do you draw the line between between uh, doing all the natural stuff to improve your health and throwing in things like supplements and medications? And then the final question, this person says, look, is it a good idea just to listen to your appetite for nutrition? Um, also, right now, we're doing a huge holiday at-home bundle sale with some of our most popular workout programs. So what we did is we took our at-home workout programs, the ones that are the most popular, put them together, and cut the price down to almost a third. So that's a huge, huge discount. Okay, so here's the programs included. Maps Anywhere, which need, which uses just resistance bands, body weight, and a broomstick to do the whole workout, so for your whole body. Then we have Maps Suspension, which uses suspension trainers that you can hang over the top of your door and do some very advanced extreme exercises, or you can make it easier by changing the angles if you're a beginner. We also put in Maps Hit, Maps Hit is high intensity interval training. This is a fat burning program, ladies and gentlemen. 20 to 25 minutes super intense workouts to burn the most calories possible. It's a great workout if you're limited on time. All three programs will give you roughly six months of at home workout programming to get phenomenal physique results. Build muscle, sculpt your body, burn body fat, speed up your metabolism. Now, normally, if you got all three programs, that would be $291. And let Shoo. me tell you, it's worth every single penny. But here's what the sale is doing. $99.99. That's it. $99.99. You get access to all three programs for life plus plus 30 days. $9.99? Are you out of your mind? 30-day trial. In other words, you can sign up for all of them, pay the $99.99, try them out for a full month. If they don't blow your mind, if they don't go above and beyond your expectations, return them for a full refund. So you literally have nothing to lose. Don't be stupid. Sign up. 
one of the biggest sales we've done all year long. Just go to mapsnovember.com to sign up. Again, that's maps, M-A-P-S, november.com. Go get it. I need your help, Sal, on this. So I need your uh, I need your nerdy brain. So mm -hmm. I I am convinced. Okay? So white and nerdy. And I, I'm I'm probably biased, but I, I feel I feel like uh, I feel like the the Caldera uh, face serum is making me look at least five years younger. Yeah. Mm. And I'm getting this, dude. I swear I swear on my life it's to the point where Katrina is trying it now. Because people have made... Because she saw your face looking yeah, good? Enough? Not only looking that way, but other people saying stuff in front of her. Hmm. So I, I feel convinced. But now, you is do that look, because... You do look good. Is that because I've got people that are saying that because maybe I'm going bald and they feel sorry for me, and mm. so they want me to feel better about myself? That's true. Or that probably takes Find the positive side I'm a dad it. now, and so they, they also want to be kind to me yeah, now. That's probably 50% of it, I think. Right? So, or yeah. because maybe uh, we're you know on this big podcast, and so they want to be connected mm. to me, so they want to be closer to me. <laughs> like, is am, am I being lied to? a lot to? of factors. Yeah, am I being lied to right yeah. now, or do I look young? From it. Is Did it really you notice crow's feet before? What do they call it? All those little lines and yes. things? Like, wrinkles. They call yeah, them wrinkles. Stop whatever. naming them weird things. I'm just yeah. saying, like I'm I'm spitting out, you know, what I read in these uh, gossip yeah. magazines. I want to see Justin use it on his uh his, his, his elbows and knees. Dude, yeah. well, it's gotten worse for me because it's like I've spent time so in Truckee and then I was just in the desert and now my skin is just like <laughs> a fucking <falling> like a lizard. <laughs> flaky hot mess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm like shit. I'm gonna have like that exoskeleton just of myself in the corner <laughs> over there. Oh. Yeah. You know when he sat in your chair, right? You're like, what is it? Who's been eating baby yeah. powder? Yeah. Like, <laughs> I'm just a plume of uh, dust. I know. I can't believe I you do. You do. It, it does. You know what? I noticed it on you for sure. But I don't feel like it is because I feel like I would have sold Justin by now. I think he was. He Justin doesn't give a shit. Yeah, yeah, that's the problem. He does not. He's the most this. confident person there is. Mm. Period. <laughs> End of story. To my fault. He, <laughs> he doesn't. Yes. He doesn't care, which is yeah. also why people so people tell me things and give me signs, and I'm just like, I don't listen. Yeah, he yeah, that's, care. that's my problem. And and but that's also that overpowers everything else. His confidence is attractive. Yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah. I guess you know you it and I have up, talked about this yeah. when Shit. Justin wasn't around. Yeah. Like, why is he so attractive? Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> what <laughs> is it? Yeah, can we bottle this? We have meetings no. about it. No, what it is is uh, uh, so Caldera. The ingredients. There's a lot of plant extracts that are anti-inflammatory. So they bring uh, swelling down in the skin, simultaneously increase uh, the, like uh, what it looks like what's it called visible, like not moistness but uh, that's plump. It, it makes your skin look more plump. I love how you're saying this with little pinchers. I don't know why I'm doing that. Beep, on my beep, 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 yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay, <laughs> milking something. Well, you <laughs> brought up the inflammation thing. I thought maybe maybe I, my fat face is something to do with that. It's inflamed all the time, mm. and now it's less inflamed. Could it could, it could be? You <laughs> so, don't have a fat face. Oh, yeah. Yes, I do. No, you do. It's just I, your cheeks. Very round. Yeah. yeah. Very it's round. Just it's just it's just the Suppose, size of your face. That hey, fat. supposedly gonna benefit me when I'm 90. So yeah, I'm like, fucking. Right. I'm excited about that. Bro, look at me. I gotta for grow a beard. Otherwise, you can see my whole jaw. Yeah, no, you look gone for sure when you're. When you're Fuck. when you hit like sixty five, yeah. you're gonna look almost. Yeah, you gotta dead. have full like gnome beard. Yeah, yeah, like the one that goes all pointed. We're like several bags and like, oh look at that skeleton. <laughs> hey, take off your Halloween costume. Yeah. You look like a skeleton. I don't know. There's some youthfulness there though. I, I'll agree with that on some level. Okay. Yeah. yeah, no, it, it works. I notice. I notice it does a good job for you. So now Katrina wants to use it. Yeah, that's always a sign. When your wife wants to use your skincare products. Yeah. That means it works. Yeah, that is right. Yeah, mm. shout out There's to Caldera there. right yeah. there. Yeah, because if right. you if you like go in my like go you go in Justin shower, <laughs> I'm sure he has like dish soap. <laughs> I ran that shampoo. No, I got rid of that, dude. I got my squash soap. Dawn. Now. I'm good. He's using Dawn in there to <laughs> wash his body. Uh, he's like, it no, used no. to be that. He's like, like no, no, pull them all if it's nicer on the skin. <laughs> that was a case study for like everything. You know, yeah. like, they just throw something Clean, else at him. Cleans your dishes, your car, your hair, and your skin. <laughs> yeah. all in one. Why would I do it? Anyway, dude, I had a, a, a decent workout, all things considered this morning, and I did something. You know, the way we write programs sometimes, I think to myself, brilliant. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> we're, we're just, moments we're just uh, complimenting the shit out of ourselves today. <laughs> yeah. 10 minutes in already, just talking yeah. about how handsome I am Ugh. and how brilliant you are. Yeah, no, so, the, so it, many pats in my back. There's something that we did in Map Split where we, uh, in, in one of the phases, where we start workouts uh, or for a body part out with an isolation exercise and then move to a compound lift. And I don't do this often enough. There's definitely some value to it. So today I wanted to have a little bit of fun in my back workout. And so what I did was I 99% of the time I start a back workout 
out with deadlifts. If I'm going to deadlift, I do it at the, at the beginning. Why? It's a heavy compound lift. Mm -hmm. You need lots of strength, lots of stability, um, and it just makes a lot of sense to do that. But every once in a while, try deadlifting at the end. After you've done your rows and your pull downs or pull ups and you've got a crazy pit, uh, back Ugh. pump, yeah. dude. That's mean. Yeah. So what I did is I I, I went light. So to, just to give uh, people an example of what that means, right? Because it's, it's individual. If I deadlift at the beginning of the workout, I'm going at least 450, 500 pounds. At the end of the workout, 300 pounds, so way lighter. But what I did is is when I came up to the top, I squeezed my lats, almost like I'm doing a straight arm pull down, mm -hmm. came back down. I had... Uh, it, probably one of the best back pumps I've had in a long time. You ever so done that? It's, a, it's a more of a feel approach. Then. It's a, it's like yeah. I'm doing a bodybuilder deadlift. Right. Does that make sense? Do you remember? Do you guys uh, remember like the cue that was like the biggest game changer for you for uh, for deadlifting? Do you remember like what like really helped you get better at your deadlift? Yeah. Um, what like what cue was it like? I read an article that said uh, rather than pulling the bar off the floor, imagine you're pushing your feet through the floor. That yeah, one. that was a big one for me, and, and also like just bending bending the bar out so I could engage my lats. Mm. Bending the bar was a big one for me. Was it? Yeah, yeah. The bit, bending the bar was a big because before that, I I think I let my my shoulders roll all the way forward, and I wasn't engaging my lats oh, very yeah. much, and yeah. so I felt more in my low back. When I learned to really engage the lats, I felt like it came out of my low back. It went back into my glutes and hamstrings. That was a big one for me, Justin. Mm -hmm. Was that mm -hmm. sitting back on your heels? Yeah, no. For for that was a big one for me too. I remember that. Like it's like when you grab the bar, you automatically engage your lats, your rhomboids, stay tight there, and then push your legs through. This is a big one. Yeah. When I would teach this to clients, I rem every single time they would do this, they'd be like, "Oh my god, that felt." So rather than trying to lift the bar, right. which I think encourages like a a low back lift mm -hmm. you're kind of squatting down and pushing your legs through stand up it encourage first off it discourages that two phase deadlift you see when when people are doing it wrong where their hips come up first and then like they stiff like a deadlift on the way up totally so it kind of discourages that it also discourages the back rounding because you're pushing through with your legs and it makes you want to stay more upright and you get you know yeah, you get a better nice lift. better bar path as yeah, a result yeah. but adam when i know cuz you competed so you trained bodybuilder ish for a long time did mm -hmm. you ever do that deadlifts at the end have you tried that? I, you know, I have. I actually have done that more now than I did that competing days. Um, uh, and I don't know why. I, it was just something that when I think when I was competing around that time was it's also around the same time that I was trying to catch you on how heavy I was going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was a tough, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> tough game. Yeah, yeah. yeah, tough hill to climb. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Shoot, what do they say? Shoot for the moon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, I that so I I was I was chasing uh, increasing strength, yeah. right? So I really wanted to to get my deadlift numbers up. So I did less of it. Where now, um, I care less about that, and it's more about, about the feel. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. So I I'll do that uh, a lot though. So a lot of times it's just that when I know I don't want to go really heavy and I want to be all technique, I'll just it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be at the front of my workout. I don't need mm -hmm. the only time I want it at the front of the workout is when I'm going after weight. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You know, I want all the energy. I want to be fresh as I can. But if it's like, okay, a technique, one of the best things that I can do is put it at the middle or the end of my workout because I already know like, okay, I'm already going to be a little gas from everything else. So this isn't going to be a PR mm -hmm. day. This is going to be my, so it helps encourage me to stay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like to stay in that mindset because mm -hmm. I know, I don't know. Like, at the end anyway. Yeah. Where even if I tell myself like today's going to be a light day, but if I start with deadlifts yeah. and I get going, yeah, it was like, oh, let's put another plate on. Oh, let's put another plate on. And <laughs> yeah. before you know it, all of a sudden a light technique day turns into a heavy day versus if I say I'm going to train with uh, train other exercises first and deadlifts going to be in the middle of the end. Mm. I don't have a tendency to do I that. I also yeah. like going lighter with deadlifts like that and then putting the rubber bands over the, uh, the bar. Well, you only really can go light with deadlifts. Yeah. Right, so. <laughs> It's all relative, Adam. <laughs> Boom. Good. Yeah. Light guy. I mean, I feel like uh, Sal's picking on me. It's okay. I'm yeah, no, going to pick on you a little bit. Yeah, you, know, yeah, so you, you do. Like, yeah. Yeah, you probably, probably got me on deadlift, but uh, nothing, nothing else. So that's that's a good one what's, to, to what's, shine a light on. What's the three lift total? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but no, would you, do, you put, do you ever do them with speed with the bands? I do with speed with the bands too, but I also like to just pull and, and you get that added resistance that's like gradual. Mm -hmm. I just like that or chains, you know, as, as I don't know. There's just something like a novel about it and it's yep. just fun to do. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I enjoy it. I sometimes attach the bands away from me yeah. so that it encourages me to pull back. Yeah. Does that make sense? So, yeah. So you're working technique a bit more totally, too. Totally. Like trying to improve yeah. that. Dude, I had a, a long night last night. You said that too, Adam. You yeah. said you weren't sleeping. Did yeah. you sleep good, Justin? 
I slept like a baby, dude. Oh, yeah. I had a long night, dude. So not, yeah. So the baby. So it you, begins. Not like I have a baby. Well, yeah. so what, what it is is, um, so you know, when your baby's born, they weigh them, right? And then they weigh them again later to see how much, because babies lose weight in the first, you know, what, four days or three days of, of life. And based upon how much weight they lose, then they'll tell you, make sure you increase your feedings or, or yeah. do whatever. Now, a couple things to consider. When Jessica was on the epidural, they were pumping her full of um, the saline or whatever, the IV. So she was kind of swelling up and holding water. And the, mid, the midwife said that it'll happen to the baby too. The baby will actually hold a little water too. So his weight at birth might have been a little heavy due to that. Nonetheless, a few days later, they weigh the baby. He's lost weight. So the doctor's like, okay, you know, feed the baby every two to three hours. Wake him up if you have to. Make sure he feeds, you know, 15 minutes on each boob. You're doing this whole thing. And so now as a parent, you're a little bit like concerned and worried or whatever. So now Jessica's stressed and she needs to feed him every two or three hours. But here's the problem. He'll get on the boob and five or 10 minutes in, out, asleep. Oh, yeah. Totally. He just, he's out. And then to wake him up, we have to like take his clothes off. I have to like take off his diaper. He hates to be naked. So then he gets like, he starts to wake up and get pissed off. But it's this game every mm. five or 10 minutes. And so last night she was struggling because he just wants to, but I forgot, like, did you, did you guys have to do any of this with, oh, with yeah, Max? No. Or was well, he- of course, Max was a preemie. So he was underway to start, you know, so that was a major concern. So we actually, after, if I recall, I know for sure at night, cause I did the nights always. But I'm pretty sure almost every feeding we also syringed afterwards. Yeah, we're doing that too. Because there's also the other side too of that she's not like fully let down or producing like mm-hmm. her max amount of milk either. So they're, they're, I forget what it's called when that that first bit that's colostrum. Coming. Yeah, she's got a lot of that at first, and you need to make sure he's getting all of that and hopefully some milk. And so we would have to syringe feed afterwards. Which, as as the dad, I actually really like this because the beginning they're they're not bottle feeding at all, right? So you don't want to confuse uh, the baby with uh, you what know, do they call it nipple confusion. Yeah, so you mm-hmm. don't want to enter if, if you don't if you can, right? If you can avoid having the uh, having the newborn yeah. use a bottle, you do. And so you know, and I was actually looking forward to that as a dad, like oh, I can't wait till yeah. I can bottle feed him and hold him and rock him to sleep, and realize that I wouldn't be doing that for several mm-hmm. months, and so. But they did want us to syringe feed him if he was if his weight was you know not increasing. So I got to syringe feed. him. Have always. you seen? <laughs> it's like the beach body version of breastfeeding. <laughs> Nipple confusion. <laughs> yeah. Oh, instead of uh, muscle confusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. Have you seen the they they make these? I don't know if they're real. I saw it on the internet once. Is it for men? Bro, it's I've seen it. They're yeah. fake boobs. They're real, yeah, it's a real I was thing. thinking that too. It, they're bottles, and yeah. a guy puts them on. Yeah, it's and a then real thing. Breastfeeds his kid. What like does that meet the Fockers or whatever? Uh, where where he puts on um, uh, what's that actor's name? But he puts on one of those fake boobs. And yeah, like Ben Stiller. Like that's a different yeah. kind of nipple confusion. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I don't you know some if I hair want, there. Yeah, it's really confusing. I don't know if I want to go that yeah, far. Not you know? good. Yeah. No, but yeah. So we were doing that all night or she was doing most of it all night. She wanted to let me sleep because I know today we had a, you know, kind of a big day or whatever. Um, But you know, and here's the other thing, breast milk is, there's, I I know that there's uh, cannabinoids in breast milk. I know they found, they know that we, that you have your own endocannabinoids you produce, they're in milk. And they say, this is one of the reasons why, like if you watch a baby breastfeed, they'll eat, 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 shit themselves out. Mm -hmm. It's like they just partied. Like they're, uh, and then, oh, (laughs) They're totally, totally out. It's Thanksgiving yeah. every day. Yeah, yeah, so he's out, and so it's whatever. I'm trying to wake him up. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty. Oh my it's, god, it's pretty. I, I've been trying to kind of avoid like politics and stuff, like we've been bringing it up a little bit. But this is a really funny story that just happened recently. So, uh, you know, Facebook is like one of the greatest places for just little like moments like this to kind of pop up with my family and whatnot. And I've been avoiding Facebook, haven't been contributing, not you know engaging at all. And I looked, I get a text actually from my dad and I was like on on vacation with my family and I I saw this and he's like, okay, so I just got to let you know, I kind of did this. I feel guilty about it. Like, but I just had had enough. Like, so like my brother and him have been at odds in terms of like their political choices, their candidates, whatnot, you know, one's Biden, one's Trump, you know, this, that. And so I'm sort of like, you know, playing moderator half the time when we're all hanging out. 
and my brother's been kind of hard on him uh, about you know his uh, backing of of the president and this and that and the other, and so it's been really awkward. And so like one of my cousin like posts. Uh, about uh, Biden and and says something about it. And then my dad contributes to it. I don't trust the thing, you know, that, that snake says or whatever. <laughs> and and so like, and my brother gets on there and he's like, oh, you mean Trump or this or that? And then, and then my dad, like, he's like, I had enough. And so he, he decides to write to, and he tags my brother, right? So he's got his name. It's like tagged in there you know, Brandon, this, and he says, suck rocks. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, dad, we got to work on your insults. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, we, suck rocks. You yeah. know, cause he's like, like he's very conservative. He's very like, you know, he doesn't swear. He's like, but he, you could tell he'd have it enough. And that's, that's the best he'd come up with. Right, right. <laughs> you know? And I just, I was dying that, that he like wrote that yeah. publicly, you, you know? And, and I was just, Oh my God, me and Courtney were dying. I would laughing. say this is the, I, I've never seen, uh, families divided as much as I have. Oh, yes, right. The, uh, not worth it, everybody. It's oh, yeah, totally. It's I, I'm walking every, everyone in my family off a cliff. Like I'm pulling them all back together. Like let's all like relax. Yeah, yeah. My, I always just say everybody sucks, and that tends to help warm because I have family members on both sides too. Like yeah. everybody, look. Let's. The, the truth is, they all kind of suck, don't they? Well, that's what I, that's what I think is really what's really funny is that we always see like it, it turns into this whole character thing, right? Like who and whoever, in my opinion, whoever wins is whoever did a better job of destroying the other guy's character, right? So that's whoever sucked the least. Is yeah, what it is. and yeah. and and I go, you know, to get to rocks to get the to the level Suck of the, of even running for president, can you imagine? how many lies and people you manipulated and how many backdoor fucking deals you had to do to get there. Oh, yeah. Like, I don't care how... Constantly. Yeah. So, I don't care which side you're on. Yeah. Like, None of them are trustworthy. Like, change my mind. Change my mind that that person didn't do some... And what kind of person seeks out that kind of life yes. to get that kind of I'm power? Like, come on. No really? No way. Did Stop you, it. Did you guys see that Real, real Clear Politics uh, rescinded uh, Pennsylvania? No. Took it away from Biden. What? Yeah. Oh. So, so this is my biggest fear. Okay. Yeah, <clears throat> so here's again. my biggest fear. And I said it in my story the other day, like somebody, because of course I have a bunch of people on both sides that are, like are so curious about how I feel. And I'm like, listen, if uh, if Biden is our president now, I'm team Biden. I don't, I don't care. Even if I even if I wasn't a fan of his policies, if he's the president, I'm a fucking fan. Right. I, I, I mean, yeah, I think- This is America. Yeah. I think it's fucking crazy not to. Now, here's what I'm worried about is- that's where we, you know, we've been told it's announced on the on on all the news networks that he's the president, right? And and we'll be in there in January. Now, even though I don't think that that uh, Trump can win, and I don't think that it's going to go that way, I don't believe that. But if it does, I'm more worried about that than ever. Oh, like yeah. I'm so worried about. Well, the, so here's the thing that that's a, this is a big one now. The first off, there's a few states that are actually getting closer. Arizona, as of the recording of this podcast, is getting so close that some some news networks are saying, "Ooh, we shouldn't have called that. That was a little too soon." See, now right? I don't know what to trust because then I've also read things that say that even all the lawsuits that are happening that he's doing right now are worthless because the amount of fraud that is potential. Is, I agree with that. Is such yeah. a small number that it won't sway one way. Or the I other. agree with that, but here's the thing that people need to understand, and this is. But why call it until they count everything? Well, so this is what the media does. Yeah, but they always do. The that, media, though. the media know, projects. The media projects the winner. They don't. Pe announce people want answers. They yeah. don't announce the winner. Yeah. The winner is not announced by the media. That's not how it works. So when is it officially announced? December, I think, is when it's when it, when it's officially announced, and then it's not really really official until they're sworn in. Yeah, sworn in. in yeah, January. but the media never does. They always project. They always say this is the projected uh, winner, mm -hmm. and if it's contested, I mean, in two thousand. Al Gore, the media projected him to win the presidency. Bush won 45 days later through mm -hmm. the Supreme Court because there was issues in Florida. And so it was, it was a close call. This is a close, uh, any way you slice it, it's a pretty damn close election. And I don't think it's going to swing back to Trump. I don't think that they're going to prove voter fraud was so so widespread. But um, but because they would ha he had he would have to win several of those states, right? Yeah, he but a lot of, a lot of them are close. I mean, there's a chance. It's a tiny chance, but there's a chance. But the media doesn't doesn't declare the winner, so it's not like the right. And this is the problem: people are so ignorant to the way our government works that they're gonna everybody's celebrating, but that never that didn't never really meant it, that he was the president elect. Yeah, it's not definitive. It's not definitive. And so then if they go back, like it happened in 2000, now the country was different in the year 2000. People protested and were pissed off. 
a lot of Al Gore fans were protesting. See, my, but it's not going to be that. See, way my time. thoughts is that it's it's not as close as we we think it is, and the, them actually saying that it's Biden early is just another way to create more controversy on the other side. And that just makes for great news. It makes mm. for great for Fox and CNN. It's like Pepsi and Coke were both winning here. Mm, could mm. be. It's a, that's the way I look at it. That they, are, they are in the business of keep, keeping our attention. And if we all, if the, it was the, if the election was over, we all agreed so-and-so is the winner and we were all on the same page and we agreed, mm. there's, then what do you think happens to Fox and CNN? For the next two to three weeks, no one gives a fuck. Oh, they're rating. You know, yeah. you know, Fox's ratings crashed already. Oh, it's because conservatives like jump ship on them. They huh? did. Yeah. I'll tell you what, dude. Uh, when Trump's out, uh, which I think is what's going to happen, media uh, company. He's going to start a media company. It's going to be funny. As shit, and he's been too. setting it up for f yeah. four years, right? Yeah. The, the, the fake news and this and that. He's gonna start <laughs> real news, fake news. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like a clear, clear Welcome to the, the Real News it's Network. Real. <laughs> isn't that exact? Isn't that the same thing that Tremendous. Fox campaigned on though when it first came out? I yeah. mean, that was like the same fair concept. and balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> what it was. Balance. Fair and balance is what it was. Not right? swayed yeah. at all. So yeah. I like intentionally. So I, I mean, I I have this is the most I've cared about any of this stuff. I've never ever paid attention uh, to any of this shit until like now, right? Mm -hmm. And. So I I really enjoy for the uh, the comedy of like get, for every one of the debates that I watched I intentionally toggled back and forth between Fox and CNN. Oh, it's it's the it's, greatest thing ever. Dude. It, it is it's so revealing. It's hilarious, and I think everybody should at least do that a few times to like really help you like get better perspective on what's going on. Like it's they couldn't be so opposite of what they're telling. And boy, they are selling it. It's oh, like yeah. they took all the story writers from Hollywood, you know, because they, yeah. they're out of Real a job, time. and then they just like okay. Can, what story can we create for this thing that yeah. just happened? Yeah, you should see that the, they did this poll. So there was a poll in 2016 where they asked the people who vote Democrat, do you trust the elect election process? And a majority of them said no, of course, because Trump won. They asked them again now, and now a majority of them trust the election process. <laughs> and it's the flip Always. with Republicans. Yeah. Isn't that, oh, I hate that. Again, the Ugh. media. That, that's why I think none of this is going to get swayed or changed. I think, I you know what I think? I think Trump and Biden are smoking weed fucking at home together. You know what I'm saying? I really do. I, think uh, I doubt it. I think, I think Trump genuinely dislikes everybody. I don't, I don't know. I feel like he's just, I don't think he <laughs> I don't know. I, you know, my buddy who's the, my, my buddy who's a hard left is just like, that's part of the, that's all part of his his scheme. This whole, this whole, the fake news and like uh, calling what was going to happen beforehand. That was just, that's all how he's been campaigning. That's all part of the, part of the, the yeah, and you see it exactly on the other side too. Yeah, so yeah. It's, it so, is definitely a strategy. No, I think they're, I think they're boys. Yeah. Well, at I the think very, they're hanging out, dude. At, at the very end, I mean, once he's out, he's still a billionaire businessman who, right. who needs that's what to I'm be saying. part, bet friends with, you know, bureaucrats. And that's, so the one thing that, right. so my, my buddies and I, so I tell you guys we're on a thread that we're all like different, right? <clears throat> the one thing that we all agree on is that at the end of all this, like when it comes to politics, like there, there's going to, there's that, and that's why I think there's such a close, even divide because some, but there's going to be a, a large group of people that greatly benefit from whoever this next man is in, in office. And there's going to be a bunch of people who don't. Mm -hmm. And that's how most people vote is yeah. like looking at that going like, Hey, when he's in office, this is, this is good for me. When this other guy's in office, this is better for my friend. And so that's what creates this crazy division. And at the end of the day, they're trying to line their own pockets behind the closed doors. And totally. they, you know what I'm saying? And then they're all, I think, shaking hands and what bullshitting together. I just can't wait for show. Thanksgiving. Uh, so oh, when God. it goes around, they'll be like, I'm thankful for not sucking rocks. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> Dude, I'd make it real you know what? Golly gee, I'm so cross. I didn't, yeah. even, I didn't even think about Thanksgiving coming up in the next couple of weeks. I sure hope that we have more clarity on who won because that's going to create shitty ass hey, it's dinner a, talk. It's a great way to whittle away and kind of clean out who you're going to buy gifts for and who's going to get them for you. <laughs> Just talk politics <laughs> at the dinner table. You know, save cool. yourself a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know I didn't even think about that. Uh, I really hope that we're further along in, in the next week than we are right what, now. So I, I listened to a podcast with Arthur Brooks on on uh, talk people who talk politics and worry about and he's and this, they've done studies on this and they show that people who talk a lot of politics. Generally, no one likes them, including people who agree with their politics. <laughs> I love that. You're stat. an annoying. You're yes. an annoying person. It's, it's 100%. So even if people agree with you, people don't want to hang out with you because you talk politics all the time. It's like he said in, in this podcast. He's like, you're just an annoying person to want to be around. It's sports. So focus on other it's shit. sports for nerds, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's just like if you're a person who's not into sports and hearing a guy, yeah. two guys battle back and forth over the if the 49ers or the Cowboys oh. are better, it is the most annoying thing. And yeah. I like sports. This whole year, it's been forced on us. You know, it's like get out of here, dude. Yeah. Get out of here with it. Hey, I looked up some 
some studies, some interesting studies on uh, sleep deprivation. I just uh, funny transition, but because Jessica's up so much with the baby, mm-hmm. you know, generally speaking, women do better with sleep deprivation, which makes sense when you consider that they are yeah. evolutionarily wow. feed, that would be an advantage for sure. Feed babies and stuff like that. So they, I mean, I saw it firsthand with Katrina. I yeah, because I couldn't do it. Oh I, yeah, I either. couldn't do it. I mean, one night I'm like a fucking bear, dude. Like yeah. one night of not getting good sleep, she was running weeks. I feel like babies yeah. would not uh, would not survive. If it was men who were the ones staying up all night, at some point you'd be like, I'm I've gonna... had it. You yeah. know, just leave it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, are not you, worth it. Terrible. Are you going through? I mean, obviously you had two kids before, so maybe you, you remember this, but I, uh, maybe it's more uh, more obvious now, right? Because you're, you're going through this again. But I remember after that first few months uh, of seeing Katrina, everything from, you know, the pregnancy to the birth to uh, all the effort into breastfeeding and everything and taking care of our son those first few months. Man, I tell you, like, uh, there's there's not enough love or conversation around single mothers. Mm. Oh, I, I don't know how. Uh, yeah, we have a friend who. I just think that I just have such a different respect for all of them. Totally. Uh, on a, on another level. I couldn't now. imagine. Like I like, we have we have a friend who's got. You know what? Fucking Target infant. should have a parking spot for them. Yeah. Single mom. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Single mom parking. Yeah, fuck all those pregnancy ones. There's hella pregnancy ones that that. Single mom should get like a fucking I know, but, but front they, row. They might feel bad parking there though. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like oh, everybody knows. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, you think, that might be sad. I just think uh, I just I just I, it blows my mind on how hard it is to do a good job raising a child uh, with a great partnership. With oh, a, it, it's hard. Oh, I mean, so I'm, doing I'm it by at, yourself is just un, unbelievable. Oh, I'm looking mm-hmm. at Jessica, and I already respected her before, but now I'm just in awe. You know what I mean? You're just in awe of the. the just the the effort, the love, the sacrifice. It's a tremendous sacrifice. You literally are sacrificing your own mental health to care for this, you know, this this little baby. But yeah, I don't know how single parents in general do it. It's I couldn't imagine juggling a job, uh, a baby, you know, your own health, your own life. Like yeah. how and in the you know, I get it. If you're wealthy, maybe you can hire help and stuff. But if you're most people who are single parents are not wealthy. Mm-hmm. Holy Toledo. Yeah. Like that's just <laughs> mm-hmm. suck rocks. Holy Toledo. Suck rocks, I was man. on that on that same <laughs> I know. I love it. I'm gonna use it for all kinds of things. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Have you guys tried other uh green juices out there? There's like so many of them now. I was like in the market and uh one of my friends had introduced me to another one here on another podcast and it like tastes like wheatgrass. Yes. Most of them are. That, that was like the 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 general uh, consensus. That's like, where you- that's why Organifi is one is such a they sell so much. You know, did you guys know that? So Organifi has become a huge company, mainly through word of mouth initially, um, and their green juice is their top seller. Do you guys know they're only six years old? Yeah, they just hit their anniversary. Really? Yeah, dude. Oh, I didn't know they're that. They're young. they're just a little older than we are. Yeah, yeah. I remember dude. we were close because we remember that just this last year we were talking about and COVID changed all that. We were going to do a party together at the same their, time. Their growth has been crazy. Ex- oh. oh, crazy. Oh, and then they they did list in their green juice how much ashwagandha is in the green juice because it says proti- proprietary blend. Would you say that's the most valuable or the most expensive part of of green juice? Well, ashwagandha is a very valuable uh, herb. Very va- It's the only herb that will consistently raise testosterone in men. It's got proven adaptogenic qualities, so it helps regulate cortisol, insulin. For me, it's the most consistent supplement in terms of if I take something and I feel it and I just feel better. Right now, I'm taking a lot of it because my lack of sleep and and stress are really, really high. And that's what it it helps with. And there's 600 milligrams of it in the green juice. That's a good amount. That's a that's a great dose. Yeah, that's a, it's not it's not it's, pissy it, dust. It blows my mind how good it tastes too. You know that they they did like 52 trials on it before they finally narrowed like nailed down the actual flavor and taste. 50, of it. Oh really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a no, lot of money. Make, yeah, it makes sense. I mean they they mastered it like to where it's like it gets that nice aftertaste of that mint and it's like I I don't know how they did it. Mm. Dude, I was telling uh, Jessica your story about Max when he threatens Katrina like he's gonna make uh, himself. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Oh my god! Dude. I'm, I'm waiting for that episode to drop. We I, were dying. Yeah, yeah. Katrina's not going to like that. I know that. We were dying. <laughs> I thought about it the other day. I told Courtney that. Yeah. But yeah. So what, what's the strategy? Have you guys come up with a strategy to get him to stop? <clears throat> well, you could just gotta let him do it. Like so, last night he oh, was. Man, what a shit yeah. Place last to be. night he um yeah. The last night was probably the the longest we'd ever let him cry. Like we Katrina Katrina has this like and I don't know what book she was reading, but there's like a there's like a, a ten minute strategy. I don't know if, if Jessica's on the on on board with this or not. No, we haven't gotten there yet. Yeah. So you know how long will you let him cry for? So she has a two, ten minute rule. 
control. So, you know, let him cry up to 10 minutes. And, and it, it actually, for the most part, has worked really, really well. Like, uh, I don't know how many times, like countless times, he, is, he falls asleep at about eight, eight minutes or nine minutes. And many times, if he goes beyond 10, something's wrong with him. Mm -hmm. Either he's not feeling well or he's teething or he pooped his diaper or something like that. If he cries beyond 10, there's, there's something else going on. So that's kind of like her rule. But now we're, we're, this is, we're beyond those, these times now. And now it's like, okay, we're trying to get to the place where we, we're training him to like, okay, it's time for bed, putting him down awake and not having to like put him to sleep, right? So we're in that phase. And then now we're also trying to get rid of this habit that he's created of threatening his mom with sticking his finger in his mouth. So <laughs> last night, you know, he was you know, ah, screaming, crying for, you know, a good like 45 minutes. And then about minute 45 or so, he, he you know, made himself throw up. And, you know, I, and Katrina's watching all of this. Like she's laying in bed next to me. And I can see the glow from the, the phone of her like watching the whole thing. And then I hear he's just threw up, you know, and I know inside of her, she wants to go in there so bad, but she didn't, she resisted. And she knows that like, we're going to have to go through this phase now, you know, and that's what I love about her and her self-awareness. Like there was a little bit of a, a, a struggle between her and I and disagreement on that when it first started happening. But quickly she realized like, oh shit, he did get me, you know? Mm -hmm. And so now mm -hmm. she knows that she's got to stand her ground as hard as it is to let him sit there and cry and then throw up in his bed and then leave him kind of in it. Yeah. She's like, oh my God, you could tell it's, it's painful for her to do it, mm -hmm. but it's the only way to break him of doing that. Otherwise, if she goes running in there, and grabs him. It just reinforces. Just continue. Right. So yeah, yeah we're, we're we're in the early phases of of uh, unwinding that. Yeah, and there's yeah. a there's something it's called a, a symptom eruption where if a, and this this is adults too will do this, but kids where they'll they do something that always works. When it doesn't work, they do more of it at first. So it's not like they get the they get the hint like oh it's not working. Now I'm going to do it more and more and more and more. Exactly. And then and then finally they figure out this is not working anymore. So yeah. you, I would expect he's probably going to try. Yeah, yeah, I, I plan. You know, I, I, um, you know, I'm planning for it to be a little rough for probably a couple of weeks, but I think that we could nip it in the butt pretty quick. You know, I, uh, I don't think he's, <laughs> I don't think anybody wants to sleep around throw up. You know, and I think <laughs> once he realizes oh that God. he's not going to get it's saved, uncomfortable, he's saved yeah. from that. I well, think. What, he he picked one that was really good though. Yeah, I never because that takes you got to clean afterwards. I mean, I've gotta, been around kids for a long time and I've never seen that or even heard of that. It's your son, dude. He's he's, yeah. he's pretty smart. Oh bro. my levels, dude. His dude. negotiating skills are very. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know this opportunity with that, like, yeah, it was no, like, it was, it was. He's like, scream louder. He's like, oh wait, but if I throw up, they got to yeah. clean stuff. Yeah, and that was really her her argument to me was like, she kind of put it back on me when I was like, don't go, don't you do this? And she's like, well, then you clean it up in the morning. And I'm like, oh fuck, okay, you got me there. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> I don't want to do that. You know what I'm saying? So okay, so I kind of like gave in, like, go get him or whatever like that. But then now she's like, okay, this is getting ridiculous. This would be a great story you could tell his girlfriend. You know, she he brings the first one home. Hey, yeah. you know what he used to do? <laughs> <laughs> Himself throw up, yeah. <laughs> just so he can yeah, get his way. Crazy, never ever Little seen turkey. that before. Yeah. Yeah, anyway, hey, uh, uh, Science Daily is a great site. People always ask me where to go to read new studies. Science Daily, there's all kinds of they post like new studies. Anyway, there was a new one on there. It was pretty interesting. They've connected a po positive outlook on life with less memory loss in older adults. So people who tend to be more positive with the mm. way they see things, positive way of life. Also, later on, suffers from less uh, like dementia, memory loss. So it's not just that they're enjoying their life more, but it's also there, there may be some positive health effects, actual measurable health effects from that's, having a good- That's interesting mm. because, <clears throat> you know, if you any anybody that's had any sort of, uh, you know, rough upbringing or trauma in their life- you tend to block it out mm. and you're probably promoting those things, right? So if you're, if you intentionally are blocking out memories, it's probably not ideal for you to be able to help you with remembering things. So mm. I imagine somebody who's been through a bunch of shit or that is negative about a, a time in their life and have intentionally blocked out. I'm sure that's probably, that's probably not good for me. There's, huh. a, lot of, there's a lot of my childhood that is like, a black bl blur for me. Really? Oh yeah. Absolutely. Where you think back and you don't remember. Yeah, no, I have very, you know, there's, uh, and, and, and it's taken me a long time. So, uh, to, to realize that I've done this, right. So no, there's no doubt in my mind that even, uh, as, as rough as my childhood might've been there, it wasn't all bad. Mm -hmm. You know, we had good days and there was happiness in our life. 
But as a kid, when when you have these really scary moments or bad times in there, they become like the highlight yeah, of your memory. They stick out. Yeah, they stick out. And so I know for young adulthood, I had this bias of like, oh, it was all bad and all negative. And it's like, no, it isn't that way. That just stands out to me. And so then the next phase of that too is in like to suppress it, you know, to suppress it and not think about it. Like, yeah, because ah, you tend to relive it every time you think yeah, about it. Yeah, right. So then you kind of, and then what ends up happening from that is you actually start to forget, you know? And so there's a lot of this like, I have a lot of blotchy memories. I can remember like certain grades, certain moments that had happened, but they, as far as like the day that happened in that, I've lost a lot of that mm -hmm. stuff. So it's yeah. interesting. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell stories. I think my, my my mom and my dad will sometimes forget shit too from my from my childhood because I'll remind them. You know, like my like, that's not me. Like, oh, oh yeah, it's great. We did that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh yeah. So like my when my son was real little, my dad was holding him, and he, I don't know. My son was probably like four, and uh, he hit my dad in the face. And my dad laughs or whatever. And I'm like, wow, that's weird. Yeah. Because that would have never happened if I did that to you. Do you guys remember the time you, you threw the you know, extension cord at me? What do you mean? What are you talking about? I never did that. <laughs> you don't remember that time? Hey, mom, remember when you threw the shoe at me at the grocery store? Uh, I never took my shoe off at the grocery yeah, store. Yeah, I reminded my dad when we used to drive to up to go camping and stuff. Like my brother and I would be in the back of the pickup right next to the gasoline. <laughs> And then you'd be huffing gasoline fumes for miles, you know? And I would just have headaches. And he's like, wow, I, I don't remember that. Yeah, <laughs> like, oh, that's convenient. I used to sit in the middle of my dad's work van when we go to work, and he made me a rope seatbelt because yeah, there was no seat there. On like, on like a milk crate, right? Yeah. Yeah. It was so gangster back yeah, then. A bungee, cord, a bungee cord and a milk crate. Oh, yeah. I would put one side was like bolted into the side. The other side, we like tie a knot to another nail that yeah. was on the side. Yeah, it like, works. It works. Yeah. Oh, that'll save you. Yeah. If we get in a crash, not really. Really, Dad? No, that's not, not gonna. No, it's not that good. Not gonna happen. First question is from Bear Bowen. What's the difference between practicing a squat versus performing a squat, and how does that contribute to overall better physique, better mobility, and longevity? Okay, so I'm I'm assuming that what he means is practicing the squat versus performing in the sense that you're doing the squat to feel it in your legs get a good workout, uh, burn your legs out. So hmm. one of them, you're practicing the technique and the form like it's a skill. The other one, you're you're aiming for a really hard leg workout. It's mostly mindset. What's the difference? Yeah, I would say- Like uh, maxing out, is he referring to Or, or like you're going for a workout versus I'm just going to make sure I, I, I do this well I and practice the skill. Um, both of them have their value. The one that has the most value long-term is practicing the skill of squatting, of mm -hmm. just going to the gym, getting into the bar, and you're not necessarily aiming for any type of intensity or burn or feel, but rather, how can I keep making this a better and better and better squat? I feel like that's got such incredible long-term benefits in terms yeah, of Yeah, and, and it too, it helps to kind of reinforce, like your body's comfortable in that movement. It's very versed in that movement. So any sort of uh, inconsistency or uh, you know something that's going to throw you in a different direction, like you know how to react and respond appropriately before you then really add more of the intensity, more of the load uh, to it. So it's very important to to do more of, of the practicing portion of it and then, you know, intermittently throw in, you know, the, the really intense times. Well, I, when I think of performing the squad, I think of somebody who is following a program that is, you know, either they've structured it or a program structured progressive overload. And last week they squatted X amount of weight. And so this week they're going to add five pounds to the right. bar or they did X amount of reps last week. And so this week they're going to do this many more reps this week. And so they're progressively overloading mm -hmm. over time in their program. To me, that's performing a squat practicing a squat that those are all arbitrary numbers none of that matters doesn't matter how many reps you do doesn't matter the weight the load on it you're going in there with the idea that i just want to get great at the movement and so what that means most of the time is re is reducing the load dramatically it's mm -hmm. not kind of like because sometimes people think like you know, when you go to practice a squat, like, oh, okay, you don't, obviously you don't want to be doing a max load while you're trying to practice. So you back off the weight a little bit, but you're still really pushing. No, like when I practice a squat, I'm like 50% or less of the weight. Mm -hmm. It's a lot less. I mean, mm -hmm. it's such a light weight that I could pause at portions of the squat. I can hold at the bottom for a long time and think about the position of my feet and my knees and my chest and my shoulders. Like, it's such a light weight that I can break up the squat. I can break it while I'm doing it, right? I'm in, a, in a, I'm getting ready to do 10 reps. 
but I can make 10 reps take me five minutes because I'm stopping at certain portions. So there's and, more flexibility there. Yeah. You know, in, in the practice mode versus, yeah, coming in with a very rigid, I'm going to get through these amount of reps and this many sets and I'm going to, you know, do it at this weight. And it's like very much like th this is what I have to do today. Yeah, yeah. Practicing it also allows you or gives you the ability to unlock the total value and power of the squat or other exercises for that matter. So for example, let's imagine you've never thrown a baseball before. So you have no experience throwing a baseball and I hand you a baseball and I say, just throw it as hard as you can, right? You would be able to throw it farther by throwing it as hard as you can uh, initially than if you practice technique and skill at first, but not for long. If you continue to practice skill and technique over time, then you'll be able to far surpass your hardest throw before because you've unlocked the maximum potential of the technique of the throw. The same thing is true for a squat. Practicing the squat, especially when you're new to lifting or even intermediate, practicing it allows you to unlock all of its total value for when you do push it. Because if you push it too early and you don't have good technique and skill, you're only going to go so far. Well, I also another example where I think you know squatting for performance versus practice looks like this. Like, so if I'm if I'm performing and I'm I'm following a routine, it's like okay, uh, today it's I have four sets of squats at 80 percent intensity with rest periods of 90 seconds in between. I go I, I I've already done all my priming or warming up, and I get right into the sets, and I'm watching my time between the sets, and I'm I'm going through and I'm adding weight, whatever, and, and I'm done. That's what performing looks like. Practice may look like this sometimes for me. I get into a set and I do one set and then I, I notice that, you know, my shoulders aren't being peeled back very well. So then I go over and I do like zone one and I'm priming for another five or 10 minutes. And then I go back to the set and then I do the squat again and I yes. evaluate, was I able to keep my shoulders back? Oh, I notice now that my feet are pronating a little bit. So then I, I go in the next set, between the next set, I'm doing getting down and doing combat stretch mm -hmm. and maybe some foot exercises in between. And then I get back and do a squat again. So when I'm practicing, uh, a, a set of squats may take a half hour, you know, mm -hmm. 45 minutes. I'm going in there with the intention to in improve the movement of the squat. And so I will break it out, break it down like that. I'll do a set and I'm watching myself in the mirror or maybe even videoing sometimes. There's great apps for this too, by the way, to kind of like break, break down to show if you have an excessive forward lean or looking at my feet to see if there's any breakdown there, see if there's any breakdown in my knees collapsing. And I'm assessing it and then I'm going back and I'm doing priming movements to improve it. And then I'm, uh, then I'm doing it again and then paying attention. So that to me is another example of what practice versus performing Dude, this qualifier. It's the, the, the difference between me as an early trainer versus an, a later trainer uh, training clients. I initially, when I had to get to clients, it was all about the sweat, the hardness of the workout, the, 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 the burn. Later on, it was about practice. People would show up and we'd practice movements, practice movements and get better at them, get better at them. The results they got were far better with the second option. Uh, they still moved. They still got good workout. They still built some muscle, but their form continued to get better. And then over time, we were able to push the workouts, minimize risk of injury, and just maximize the results that they got out of those exercises. So in my opinion, practicing, especially if you're new to intermediate, should be where you spend a lot of your time. Later on, when your form is great and you can get in the bar and do a, a great squat, no problem, then it's okay to push uh, performance more than anything. Next question is from Jeff Carrillo, 23. I have a 65-year-old dad who's never strength trained in his life and is fragile. How would you start introducing him to strength training? You know, the beauty of, of strength training or resistance training, the main reason why, aside from the rate it changes the body and how it gets the body to adapt, what makes it so unique is it's the most modifiable, individualized form of exercise that uh, exists on the planet, okay? So when you go to physical therapy with any injury at all, I mean, you could go there after you're, you could get paralyzed, you could have a shoulder that doesn't work anymore, you could have extremely limited mobility. The way that they improve your mobility, the strength in your body is with different forms of resistance training, okay? Resistance training, very individualizable. You take someone like this who's 65, uh, fragile, like you, like you said, Resistance training is anything that is slightly outside of his everyday life, uh, adding resistance to right. easy movements. You know, I would take uh, somebody like this, and if they could sit down with control, so if I could have them just put their hands out in front of them and slowly sit down with control so they don't plop down on a chair, then that would be an exercise. I'd have them slowly sit down, mm -hmm. sit at the bottom, and then stand back up. And I'd keep the intensity very low. We'll do five of those 
and then we'll rest. Um, it, I could take somebody like that and I could have them try and straighten their arm up above their head, but they can't because they don't have the strength and mobility. Okay, so what we're going to do is for 10 seconds, I want you to try and get your arm as straight as you possibly can over your head. So the resistance is just their own body, their own body not allowing them to do it, and they're pushing against it. And that would be a version of an overhead press. Really, you just take them where they're at, meet them there, and then slowly advance them forward and modify exercises for their body. That's really it. Yeah, and, and this is where I would look specifically at their stability and, and how they can uh, uh, control their body. And if it's if it's if, if they have that much established, and then I can sort of you know gradually add to that, you know, that's what I'm going to look at. And it's going to be something as simple as like reinforcing their posture and getting them to understand how to tighten their body, where they need to tighten it to be able to ground themselves and to be able to manage a weight. So really it's about being able to manage weight before you even start moving it and doing crazy things with it. Uh, you know, for me, like I like to take a lot of these types of clients, uh, you know, through walking patterns and do stuff like it. It looks like farmer carries, but it's just real gradual amount of weight that I could see how their body uh, reacts to. Because as you move, uh, now you, you have to compensate for uh, you, you know this load differently. And so how how is there how are they going to be able to maintain control? Are they going to stay tight in their core? Are they going to be able to uh, keep this upright position? You know, and then or stuff on the ground. You know, how can we get up from the ground and, and use strength and, and coordinate uh, you know their limbs and their their muscles and contract properly even to pull this off. Well, we have a lot of uh, a great free um, assets for this person, and then we have uh, stuff that we have programs, right? So I would, I would definitely take advantage of the MapsPrimeWebinar.com and then the PrimeProWebinar.com for him right away, because that's something that uh, he absolutely should be incorporating. Um, now that's not uh, resistance training; that's mobility work and a, like an assessment with him with like his movement, like Justin was alluding to. But that's the place that I would start him at. I would start him there. And then I would also start him with Map Starter. So uh, many of the exercises that are in there are, are designed for somebody in, in, this, in this case, right? Somebody who is advanced age, uh, hasn't really ever resistance trained, or maybe hasn't resistance trained in decades. Um, this is a perfect place for most people to start. Uh, using that and incorporating that with those two webinars, mm -hmm. uh, I think would be incredible tools and a great place uh, for him to start. And you literally could start as little as, you know, the the webinar, have him follow it along, you know, follow my Prime Pro webinar for one of the days, and then take one of the days out of Map Starter and start him right there. Two days out of the week, one day is heavily focused on mobility stuff. The other day is focused on real basic strength training movements to get him going and then build upon yeah. that. Yeah, but what's true for the 65-year-old is who's fragile is also true for the fit and strong 20-year-old. When mm -hmm. you train yourself, all you're doing is you're challenging yourself above your current capacity. So wherever that is... Uh, I mean, I'll, I'll give you a story. I, I trained a guy named Frank years ago. He was in his 80s, and he was on a walker. So he had a very hunched over posture on a walker. And the very first day I trained him, the exercise was I'd have him hold his walker, and then I'd have him let go of his walker and just try and stand up as straight as he possibly could, maintain his balance. We'd hold that for five to 10 seconds. Then he'd go back down and grab his walker. That was one rep. And we would do that. We did that for the first few times we worked out. Eventually, it was easy for him to kind of stand up and get strong. And then I'd have him take a couple steps without the water. It's just challenging yeah. yourself a little bit above your current capacity. And that's true for anybody, not just yeah. this, this person we're talking you gotta about. You got to meet people where they're at. Next question is from Trey Thayer. Where do you draw the line between deciding to improve your health naturally through diet, exercise, and sleep, or using more unnatural methods like supplements and medication. How do you strike a balance between these two methods? Oh, good question. Okay, so here's a good rule of thumb, okay? Focus on diet, exercise, sleep, and lifestyle, and focus entirely on those. And if those are not great, don't, don't waste your time with supplements and medication. Mm -hmm. Now, there is a caveat, okay? There is a caveat. If the supplements and medication are needed to help you with your sleep, to help you with, you know, exercise, then those can sometimes be of great value. So let's say you have anxiety issues that are really, really bad, and they're they're your your anxiety is so bad that it's hard for you to even focus on eating a good diet. It's hard for you to work out because you're out of breath because of the anxiety. You definitely can't sleep. 
In that case, natural supplements uh, might help, like a Organifi's Gold Juice can help with something like that, or Ned's Hemp Oil can help with something like that. And they'll help you enough so that you can get the good sleep or good exercise. But the rule of thumb really is focus on the diet, exercise, sleep, and lifestyle first, because those are the things that cover 95% of everything anyway. Throwing supplements or medication on top of that, it's not going to do a whole lot. I mean, I, I, the truth is, and I think this is, and this is something that I feel like I've had to have this conversation more with somebody who maybe has listened to us since the very beginning, and then they're they're still around right now, and we have all these different partners of things like Juve and Felix Gray and you know Organifi and all the all these great these companies that we we have partnered with, but our messaging is still never changed. Um, I ideally. You, you do not want to have to use any of that stuff. And that and that's what I think you, we should all be searching for. I mean, in a, in a perfect world, um, I've got a great sleep routine. I don't need any assistance. I, I do a good job of, you know, turning my uh, electronics off at, at an early enough time that I can my brain can settle down at night. I don't need any of these tools. Um, I'm eating correctly enough whole foods and hitting my macro targets that I don't need a protein powder. These are all tools to help. And I think that if if you find yourself dependent on supplements or medication, uh, you're you're just kind of you putting your finger in the hole. You know what I'm saying? Like there's there's still a hole in the boat and you need to patch it and fix it. I don't think it's a good idea to just accept that, oh, this is how I, I need this to go to sleep every single night, or I need this in order to hit my protein intake. I'm always striving to get my protein intake through whole foods, but it doesn't mean that I don't have, uh, you know, like five jugs of protein powder above my refrigerator. I do. And I, and, but they last me quite a while because I use them intermittently. I use them as needed. I don't use them like, oh, this is just part of my routine. I have two protein shakes every day to make sure I hit my targets. No, my goal always is to make sure that, or try to make sure that I get my protein and take through whole foods. But the reality is a lot of times it doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. And so when it doesn't, I, I, I use these things. And the same thing goes for, like you mentioned the Ned and the, and I mentioned Felix Gray and all these partners we work with and Juve, like I mean, my goal is to get out in the sun for an hour to two hours every day and get it on my body. Like let let the natural sunlight give me all the benefits that it provides. Now, when it doesn't, I discipline myself to make sure I spend 20 minutes in front of my juve. Like so, I, but what I don't do is go like, oh, I've got the juve light, so now I never need the sun. Yeah, right. Like that's not, a, I don't think that's the right no. mindset. These are inter interventions. These are things that I would hope like are used as a catalyst to then promote more healthier behaviors right. and, and really seek those out. And I, I have this conversation quite a bit with my family members because it's always like, what's the new thing? What's the thing that's going to help me sleep better? What's the thing that's going to help my performance in the gym? And and it's, it's always the same answer for me, but they want to, they want to go to the supplement they want to go to that uh you, you know the, the the bio device you know something that that they didn't know about and it's nothing unique or new really that's going to get you there other than you know what what works is you know the good sleep you know the good diet the good regimented uh you know training program and consistency and that's always going to be the answer and how can we find our way back there is really what the conversation should be about yeah you know what's funny is they do studies on people who take supplements and they find that people who take health supplements have much better health. So you think, oh, it's the supplements. No. No, when they go deeper, it's because people who tend to take the time to buy health supplements they and care. take them consistently care about their health. That's right. They so care. they also have better diets. They also exercise. Right. And when they control for that, that's where you see all the all the. I games. mean, I have all of these things, right? So, and yeah. just, you know, back to the Juve, the Felix Cray, all these awesome things. And I use them all, right? But I, I also don't go, oh, I'm not going to, you know, try and be good about, <laughs> you know, the sun or try and be good about turning my, like, that's always the main goal. Mm -hmm. The reality is I know that that doesn't always happen. And so this is where I find value in owning or having these things at, at your disposal, but you don't ever want to become dependent on totally. it. Totally. Next question is from Jay Emke. Is it ever a good idea to listen to your appetite when it comes to nutrition? I feel like as long as we eat healthy and don't completely overdo it, our appetite should be a good indicator of how much food our body really needs. Oh, yeah. I'm going to give you an answer, but there's a strong uh, disclaimer here. So, yes, your appetite is the best 
indicator of how much you should eat. Now, here's the disclaimer. Yeah, oh, maybe for five percent yeah, of you. Most, yeah, you have to have <laughs> you have to have a healthy uh, appetite. Healthy meaning not like when I say healthy appetite, some people think, oh, that means you have a big appetite. No, that's not what I mean. No. I mean a balanced appetite. You also have to understand how to read your body signals and have a good relationship to food and your body you and your emotions. Under, yeah, you have to understand cravings versus real hunger too. Yeah, that's it. If you don't have that understanding, if you grew up in a way like most people. Um, where you valued food mainly for its its flavor and its hedonistic value. If you've learned to eat food to make you feel better when you're stressed or anxious or depressed, um, if you've uh, if you have a body image uh, where you don't like the way you look and so you've manipulated your food to change it in a way that's unhealthy, if you're like most people, your appetite is a terrible initially is a terrible way to judge what you should eat because then people say, well, I'm hungry all the time. Like right now I could eat a donut. Right now I could eat pizza, right? I just ate four slices of pizza. I'm still hungry for ice cream. They don't understand what real appetite means. They don't have a good connection. So it's like, it's almost like trying to read a map. It's like, does, is a map a real great way to navigate? It is if you know how to read a map. If you don't know how to read a map, it's just a piece of paper. It's not going to tell you anything. I don't know how to ordinate, orient myself. I don't know where north is, south is. This map is its more valuable to me to burn it in a fire to keep me warm than it is to help me navigate. Your appetite, if you don't know how to read it and you don't have a good relationship with yourself and with food, it's not going to help. Yeah, I think this is a dangerous place for most people. I just really do. I just don't think there's a lot of people at this level. I think in order to be, not only would you have had to really pay attention to all these markers of like how my skin is, how my sleep is, how my energy is, how my hair, my stool. Not only will you have to tease all that stuff out to really get an indicator on like how your body is responding to the foods that you're eating. You also probably have to be eating a 99% whole food diet too. Yeah. Because that's the processed foods are engineered for you to make you want to eat more, and, it, and they're calorie dense. So if you're relying they're on basically they're appetite drugs, think right? Of it that way, right? So if if you're if those are if those are in your diet, and th this includes healthy products too, by the way, you know protein bars. I mean that was one of the things I remember telling you guys when I was competing. I, I noticed that uh, I did some shows where I, I allowed um, you know protein bars into my diet, and then I had other ones where I did none at all. And this was just for personal. I just was curious to uh, if it would change how how difficult was a diet, if it would change the way my body looked on stage. And it was very minimal for the average person. But what I noticed was the the cravings of those things. Like, you know, I would go from not having any protein bars whatsoever, and then I'd have one, and like, oh my god, it would stimulate me wanting another one. Before you knew it, I was, and because they're balanced macro wise, I could get up to eating four protein bars in a diet, still diet for a show, and get in good shape and look good. But what I noticed was the way it would promote me to want to eat more and more of those, which made it more difficult for me to restrict in calories. So. It really depends on how your current diet is, how much work you've put into really learning your body's natural signals of of, of uh, hunger or are you being satisfied. So to me, there's a very, very small percentage of people that, I mean, this is true intuitive eating, right? Like this is the the pinnacle that I think most of us are trying to get to. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm in this over 20 years now and still don't think I've mastered this. I think I have a, I think I have a good a good idea and a good control, yeah. but I don't think I've mastered well, it. Yeah, and, and two, you could just eat potatoes and be satisfied, but you could be malnourished you know, at the same time. And so you have to put some thought and effort in what you're consuming still, always. And that's just something that you, know, uh, you don't want to just fly by one indicator alone. No, no. And in the past, I mean, it was what was available to you. And whether or not you you hunted something and killed it, and then your your body would tell you when to stop eating it, so you don't, because you could hurt yourself by overeating. But that wasn't hard to do because it wasn't heavily processed. I mean, heavily processed foods, which include supplements uh, in many cases, uh, like protein bars and shakes and that kind of stuff. Um, they that's their number one goal is to make them as as palatable as possible, which essentially means overcoming your natural uh, satiety signals. That's what it means. In fact. I don't care what food category there is. I don't care if it's health food, junk food, dessert, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. If you want to guarantee yourself a number one selling food item, it has to be the one that is the most palatable. It doesn't matter. Even health foods. Go through all the health food categories and pick the number one selling mm -hmm. protein powder, the number one it's selling- the one that tastes the best. It's the one that's the most palatable. It's not the one that is deemed healthiest. the healthiest yeah. at all. So- 
So that's something you want to pay attention to. Now, and again, Adam talks about it being a, a pinnacle. It's a, it's not. A, I wouldn't even say it's a pinnacle. It's not a destination. It's still. It's always a process. It's just a process of awareness. It's a process of deconditioning yourself from how you've always ate before and learning how to eat differently. Uh, you know, moving forward. But once you start to get the hang of it a little bit, you do start to read your your hunger a little better. Now, I mean, I mean years ago, I got to a point where I would eat a meal. And I was able to identify when I was satisfied. Before that, I wasn't satisfied until I was way over full. Like I would eat, you know, at a family mm-hmm. dinner, and I'd eat, 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 and then I'd eat, eat yeah. dessert. And then at the end of the night, I'm like, I'm laying in bed, and I'm like, oh my god, I can't. Like, yeah, I feel terrible. Like what? Did I, what have I done? Why do I always do this to myself? And then I'd repeat it again the next time around. I got to the point where you know I would eat a dinner, and then I'd be like, uh, I'm actually satisfied. I don't. I, I'm reading my appetite. I'm reading my satiety a little bit better. Whereas in the past, and this may be because the way I was raised or the way we enjoy or celebrate food, it was like, how much can you possibly fit in your yeah, it's mouth? Like a competition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And in fact, you know, this is a saying in, in my family. They'd say, do you have room for more? Like, well, yeah. <laughs> can you possibly squeeze Let me food? think about it. Yeah. <laughs> you know? See what yeah. I can make. So look, Mind Pump is on YouTube as well as uh, the podcast app. So if you want to watch the podcast, go to YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So search for us. Mind Pump Justin is where you find Justin. Mind Pump Sal is for me. Mind Pump Adam is for Adam. And Doug, the producer, you find him at Mind Pump Doug. Outside, go hiking, go climbing, go fix something, go clean mm-hmm. something. And there you go. There's your activity. Go outside, do your yard work, wash your cars. There's three hours of cardio right there. Yeah, oh, it enhances and, your lifestyle. Everything benefits. And, and if you're married, your wife will probably want to have sex with you because you did all the stuff that you're supposed <laughs> to do. It's the secret hack. <laughs> Instead yeah. of doing... 